Yo, we'll go to Tales tomorrow. I'm Maro, your storyteller for today, and with me I have some more RPG horror stories. Of all the talk that I've done about me being like a D&D VTuber and stuff, I've not really done anything VTuber related except like stream like once and that's about it. I gotta do more VTuber related things, more of those cliche things, because why not? I mean, we have a whole avatar to use, so we might as well have all the fun with it, you know? What is a VTuber thing that, <laughs> that I can do? Let me know in the comment section below, and I'm gonna get to the first RPG horror story for today. Blair wants to play as Satan. I'm fairly new to D&D. I've taken part in two campaigns, but both these groups fell apart due to real life circumstances. About six months ago, some friends and I started our own group. Since I'm the only one with any experience, I took the role of DM. So for our session zero, I did my research and helped them make their characters and backstories for Dragons of Stormwreck Isle. Right off the bat, I told them no evil characters for our first campaign. So of the four players, we ended up with a half-elf cleric, a talk gnome fighter, a human hunter, and the problem character, an elf warlock. While we were making characters, he basically said that he wanted to play as Satan trying to conquer heaven and kill Yahweh by enslaving people into his demon army. I told him no, and explained that I needed him to come up with something that could feasibly fit into this campaign, and that being a chaotic evil character in a party of neutral to good characters would put him at odds with the rest of the party. Maybe a more experienced DM could make that work, but this was my first campaign, so no. He argued with the group for a while, but eventually backed down. His new backstory was a chaotic neutral character that was sent to Stormwreck Isle by a celestial patron to eradicate the undead. Having a pact with the devil wouldn't be that bad. Uh, have like a fiend patron and uh, set up with some sort of like an evil devil and make your character work and communicate with the DM to find a character that both of you can be happy with. That wouldn't be that bad. But no, the guy really wanted to play as Satan. So let's see how this is going to play out with our celestial patron character that wants to slay the undead. So fast forward to session one. The party arrives at the island and makes their way to the cloister. The warlock immediately starts causing problems by trying to bully and intimidate the kobolds for no apparent reason. Eventually, I brought out Runara, who unbeknownst to the players is a bronze dragon, to rein the situation in. At this point, he tried to intimidate her with the roll of 18. Obviously, this would not have worked, it would with a natural 20. At most, I was going to have her look slightly startled before standing her ground. It's at this point Warlock says, My eyes start to glow a fiery red and I cast Eldritch Blast on her. I was more than a little concerned at this point and asked him if he was absolutely sure he wanted to do that. I even said, You get a strong sense of restrained power emanating from her and the distinct impression that this is not a fight you can win. Are you sure you want to attack? So despite myself and the whole party saying, Don't do it, he attacked saying that this bitch is no match for the power of Satan. Oh, of course he's gonna continue playing Satan. Of course, he's so obsessed with the whole idea of being Satan. Why do people want to be Satan and not Santa? I would gladly play Santa in D&D. Gladly! A jolly old artificer that has a bag of holding that's basically his, like, Santa's, uh, like, bag of goodies and giving out gifts to everybody. Sometimes they can be hurdy gifts, but he gives it out non-lethally in some way. I don't know. You know what? I'm making Santa. I'm making a Santa character, 100%. At this point, I stopped to remind him that I had said no. At this point, I stopped to remind him that I had said no to that backstory, to which he responded by saying that he had decided to stick with it, but as a secret identity, and that I should not be stifling the player with those kinds of restrictions. It's fine to want to have a secret identity, but run that stuff with your DM. If your DM doesn't know that's your secret identity, they can't work your secret identity into the story. You gotta communicate with your DM about these sort of things. Your DM has to know this stuff about your character, even though the other player characters will not know. But if you keep things from secret from your DM, you can't just pull it like a, like a, a rabbit out of a hat and say, Haha, DM, look at this rabbit out of a hat. I am Satan. I've been Satan the whole time. The DM decides if you have been Satan or not. It's up to the DM to decide if that runs or doesn't. This guy is some sort of extra level of special I, I don't know i don't know what's going on this guy's been this guy's silly this guy's a silly billy so at this point i thought screw it and decided to let him face the consequences Renaro transformed to a dragon and one shot him because he was level one with seven hp warlock got visibly upset and tried to say that a dragon should be no match for satan and that it was unfair for me to kill his character an hour into the campaign luckily the table at large backed me up and told him this was entirely his own fault not least for playing a character we had specifically told him not to. He was very salty about it, but had to spend the first session watching the rest of us play. Happy ending though, because he came back next session with a true neutral tiefling rogue, and even apologized for his disruptive behavior. 
Since then, we had all been having a great time with it and think I'm going to continue to run the campaign. Wow, what a turnaround. Wow, looks like when you show a player that actions have consequences, they really reconsider their actions and really want to have better consequences than just getting one shot by a dragon. Wow, who would have thought it? You know what, this is a lovely character development. I'm so happy for him. I hope it goes well and I hope there's not gonna be any problem behavior. Just make sure to rein him in if something's going on or just let him face the consequences of their actions. Sometimes players just need to have that be experience because they think they want to make an overpowered creature that could just be not defeated at all but like you're you're level one <laughs> you have seven health you're, you're level one against the dragon you, there's nothing you could do there's just nothing you could do either way really well handled i appreciate it let's get to the next story for today self-insert player is fracturing our group and everybody is too afraid to do anything about it i am a smallish community that are based on discord and play ttrpgs together since I joined, I've been in three games, one ongoing and one one-shot, and in all of them, there's been a notable problem player. I refer to the problem player as self-insert because first and foremost, and in my opinion, one of the core reasons that have been causing issues, that's exactly what she does. She's played four characters now, and each one is remarkably similar, right down to the small details. All of our characters share her general identity, her life story and background, her general appearance, her personality, her mental illnesses, her political views, practically everything. Not to be clear, it's completely fine and perhaps even expect for players to imprint some of their traits onto their characters. We're also a very LGBT plus server and so you'll see a lot of players who primarily play characters who match the gender identity or sexuality, or players who make characters inspired by their cultural background. But self-insert takes it a bit further than that. She's quite literally trying to pass herself off as four different characters each time, and we're to still. She has stated that all these characters are A, supposed to be separated people, and B, some of them have even met or interacted with each other in universe. Each of these characters quite literally all looks the same. They have the same kind of skin tone, eye color, hairstyle, body type. This wouldn't be a problem if self-insert was not constantly inserting, for lack of a gentler term, her words characteristics into the games to the point of stirring up drama and tension. The first problem that arose was politics. Like most sane Discord servers, we have a no politics discussion rule, period. We're here to play and escape from that BS, so there's a blanket ban on it. Usually this is corrected pretty fast if someone starts talking politics of any kind. They will be quickly asked to stop and removed if they refuse, especially new players. Self-insert, however, has somehow woven her political beliefs directly into her characters and, for some reason, has been allowed to continue. Several times now, in the middle of a session, her character has abruptly gone on a long tangent about some really obscure form of communism, or accused an NPC, or sometimes even a PC, of injustice and use very modern, non-game setting appropriate terms and language to talk about it. If politics are off the table completely for the server, then why is the player allowed to put their personal politics inside of a character, right? They're not putting in, like, they're putting IRA politics into the character, not the world's politics into their character. At least I don't think they are, unless that's what they're doing. I don't know. That's all the time I could see why it would be excusable. But like, if, if the server's rules is no politics, then they probably should have just stuck with it. Like, just no politics for anybody, including the player in question. Her first character, a mortal turned secret unfathomable elder <laughs> okay, that's some main character stuff right there. In some games that could work, but oh my god, that's a mouth salad. Jesus. Immortal turned secret unfathomable eldritch god that was invertible to death and was supposed to be capable of altering any physical matters at will. Thankfully the DM did not actually allow her to use this, yet still looked like a regular conventionally attractive human, of course. Suddenly decided that another PC was a bigot and a libertarian and went on a very long in-character tangent about communism and their backstory of going through hardships that none of the other PCs could ever fathom to understand. It was very awkward and out of place and honestly it felt like satire. Except it's not. This is a bizarre thing to do. Your problem play needs to really relax or, I don't know, maybe play some Helldivers too. It gets really contagious with the whole for democracy, for liberty, for freedom, you know? 
Uh, plus, I mean, maybe it's my own biases being born in Russia and stuff, but anybody that spouts about communism is just kind of like, eh, I, 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 I can't believe it because they don't know what it's really like. This is some really strange self-insert characteristics. Why communism of all things? It just feels bizarre and weird. Another thing self-insert likes to do is to pile changes upon changes on her characters while a game is in progress and will actively chase down the DM to make it happen. This is seemingly done on a whim and often doesn't seem any deeper beyond I had a cool idea so we need to pause the entire plot so I can do what I want first. This leads to all her characters becoming cluster pricks of random concepts and traits, many of which are heinously overpowered that lack any solid theme. Unfortunately, everyone goes along with it. Why do they go along with it? Why does the DM allow it? Why does she get special privileges to put in her political beliefs and political stuff and even just in general politics in her characters, in her, I guess, play style and allowed to be like a, a freaking main character that's rewriting stuff? So an Eldritch God of Immeasurable Concept is just not allowed, but she can rewrite a bunch of stuff and everything can just be put on hold to make sure we can satisfy her needs. This is weird. What is your DM doing? What is your server doing? Why is she giving a pass for something that wouldn't fly for anybody else? But the biggest issue is that self-insert is not only a self-insert, but more or less a murder hobo. As mentioned, all our characters so far have had ridiculously over-the-top powers and abilities. Usually just some combination of manipulating or altering matter at will, total mind control, extremely fast or superior generation, immortality, and shape-shifting. You know, basically all of the things you don't want a player character to have in a group. But the DM continues to allow this, so as long as self-insert rolls for it, no matter how ridiculous their request. A couple of us have tried to speak up about it, but I've been quickly shut down by self-insert herself, who, of course, takes any sort of criticism as a personal attack and or discrimination. These overpowered abilities make every single game with this player irritating and unpleasant for two reasons. First of all, her character dominates the narrative. It doesn't matter if another character has a better solution or is a better fit for the task, no. Self-insert will insist on doing it every time before anyone else has a chance to speak and will do so with her immense array of extreme powers and seemingly endless areas of expertise. Let's say for example, there's a reinforced warded door the party needs to get through. Self-insert's character, who probably never ever mentioned an interest or skills in magic before, suddenly is a mage with 20 years of experience and is totally better at it than the party's actual magic user because their insert politically charged term of your choice and clearly doesn't know anything. She has pulled out so many random specific skills from her ass to the point where her characters are literally experts at everything according to her. Ah, a Mary Sue. I think you're looking for Mary Sue. Mary Sue for 500? Yeah, Mary Sue. There we go. Perfect. Gotta answer. And the DM will allow it, so long as she rolls for it. It doesn't matter how ridiculous her requests are. Whenever she wants to mind control an NPC into doing something, transmute a completely different object into the one we need, or hand wave a solution that her character wouldn't logically know much about, it's all fine as long as the die succeeds. This is a problem with the DM just allowing anything to happen because overall, DMs, you need to start putting your foot down. Sometimes characters just simply can't do whatever you want them to do and not even give them a chance for a dice roll should allow them to do so. Because guess what? A mage can't just make water into vine. Not everybody can just turn water into oil or oil into water. You're just not physically capable of doing so. There got to be some limitations to characters. You can't just roll for things just to snap it into existence or do whatever you want. You can't, that's just, that sounds silly. That means everybody can do anything anything all the time without any sort of repercussion. It sounds really stupid and makes no logical sense in the slightest. That means the other players should be able to do the same thing as well. Maybe even snap the problem play out of existence if they want to, if they roll high enough. I mean, if only that makes sense, if the problem player is allowed to do it, everybody else should be able to do that as well. Unless they can't. Maybe she's getting like special privilege or something, who knows? This means that everyone else who isn't her is shoved to the sidelines. She is the main character and the rest of the party exists only to either lift her up on her quest to be the bestest, most specialist, ultra powerful goddess or to be her punching bags. Which brings me to the second and arguably the worst problem. self insert likes to turn on other PCs at the drop of a hat. All of her characters, despite supposedly being universally loved by NPCs and described by the players as loving, empathetic, and pacifist, are extremely ill-tempered and quick to violence. The smallest in-character disagreement, something as small as, I don't think they're doing X is a good idea, maybe we should do Y, 
usually ends with self insert asking the DM if she can mind control, attack, or forcibly transform someone for pissing off her precious chosen one. This is some main character Mary Sue nonsense bullshit. And if the DM allows that sort of thing, then I think we found the two problems the PC and the DM who enables this sort of behavior. This usually ends up being an empty thread. But there have been times when the DM had allowed it if another PC is being aggressive enough in return, leading to out of game tension between players. It also feels to me borderline fetishy, as a lot of the punishments she tries to second PCs involve mind control, submitting to her will, and forced transformation. Fortunately, the keyword here is tries, so thankfully she hadn't actually managed to do anything too weird to another PC yet. But the fact that DM even allows her to do something like this and just lets her have an attempt. That is not okay, that is not a good thing, that's an, a DM that enables bad problem play behavior. Not only are you stuck with a problem player brat, but now you're dealing with a DM that is just enabling this brat to do whatever the hell she wants to do. And that's not okay, at all, not always okay. Her behavior, not okay, DM allowing it, also not okay. Her current character, who she's only had for two weeks, a paladin, is already chosen by the extremely powerful celestial beings, capable of mind control, royalty, apparently famous and recognized in the world capable of shape-shifting and regenerating, etc. All she's done so far is force herself to be in the spotlight for every second and insult, degrade, and humiliate the rest of the party, even the ones that suck up to her. Since she technically does things by the dice and it's all in character, even when it's painfully obviously not, the DM allows it. Nobody else says anything either. If we try, self-insert accuses us of personally attacking her or being bigoted, so I think everyone's honest is just too afraid to take any action. Lee self-insert unleashes our full wrath and causes more headaches. I love the rest of the group, and I very much enjoyed sessions where self-insert isn't there. But holy fuck! Never give people like this an inch. They will take a mile every time. And I hope you guys take this power away from her by talking to the DM and saying, we're not willing to take this, we're not willing to play if this is not resolved or this is not reined in. Clearly, problem player is allowed to get away with problem behavior because the DM is an enabler here. They're not stopping the problem player at their tracks when they should be doing that. They're not reining the person in because clearly the problem player here is just being enabled by the DM. The DM allows him to roll for whatever and allows him this and that and be a Mary Sue main protagonist. This is not fun for anybody except maybe for the DM, I don't know. And for the Mary Sue, obviously it's fun for her because she gets to be the old powerful, the old magnanimous. And the best, and sweetest, most powerful, most amazing ever that can control everyone's mind and just and they can mind control and shapeshift and do whatever she wants because she gets to do all of it. Obviously, she can because she's the main protagonist, Mary Sue. Yeah, I'm just talk to this DM, other DM, just anybody at this point in the server. Either leave the server or form your own group. Basically, honestly, here's what I recommend: form your own group. Don't play with this problem player. Don't play with this DM if they're gonna be sticking to enabling this problem player. Find a different DM out there, make your own Discord server, make your own group, and play with that group instead. That'll probably be way more enjoyable than dealing with this nonsense. Because this is absolute nonsense. One of y'all could probably even DM if you can't find a good DM. One of the biggest problems here right now is this just DM just straight up enabling this problem player to do whatever the hell they want to do. Problem players are a problem, for sure, 100%. But problem DMs that don't drain the problem player in and just enable that sort of behavior continuously over and over and over again, just hand wave everything, just let him do whatever. That's another big problem. You need to have a DM that's willing to put the foot down for a problem player. And this DM, if they're not going to do that, it's never going to fix any of the issues here whatsoever. And with that, that's going to be all our stories for today. I want to thank you very much for watching and thanks so much for being here. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Also, if the RPG horror stories ever goes down or if you want to submit your own personalized horror story, email is down in the description below. I'll see you again in more Tales tomorrow. Bye-bye.